Hello everybody, my name is Peace and I kind of wanted to go over today a little bit about how I got to where I am and what prompted me on this journey. I know everybody's heard about this thing called a spiritual awakening and everybody in the spiritual community makes it sound like it is such a beautiful experience and it is just not that. Okay, I'm going to tell you the ugly truth about how I got to where I am today. I didn't just wake up one morning and think I'm going to start talking about things that are going to make me look crazy and lose friends and family and um, start this journey. And no, it had nothing to do with that. Something fundamentally had to change my experience in order to get me to where I am today. So let me go into that a little bit with you. Um, back in the day, I was a scared little girl. Okay. I was adopted and I had a very abusive upbringing and a lot of abandonment issues. And it was a very ugly upbringing. And my whole life, I've had to be this warrior spirit and continue trucking through regardless of how I felt because I was raised by two older parents who, if it was not broke, you don't fix it. You don't put them in counseling. You don't say anything. You just let them go through life pretending that they're normal. I was never normal. I saw things as a baby that children should never see. I had experiences and reason being I was adopted and I was a very lonely, scared little girl. And so when you're in that position, you can bring in entities and I didn't know this. I was just a baby, you know, and when I moved to this property, which was like seven miles out of town in the deltas, no neighbors for miles, uh, there was a spirit there that continued to attack me and unbeknownst to me because I was a traumatized little girl I had invited this entity in and it was a snake a serpent that and notice when I said that all of a sudden the light got brighter on the computer I don't know if you guys noticed that but you might want to rewind and see that but this serpent would come in every night and it was larger than life. And mind you, I'm just a small child. I don't understand why I'm seeing the things that I'm seeing. I'm just, you know, going through the experience. So the serpent would come in every night and it would squeeze what it felt like the life out of me. And I was so petrified that I would go every, I would beg my sister every night, please don't go to sleep, Raquel, please don't go to sleep. And she'd go, okay, and then she'd fall asleep, and then I would have to go through the experience again. So at night, I would climb into the little cabinet in the bathroom behind all the, the bath towels, hoping that this entity wouldn't find me. And unfortunately, my mother would. And because of that, I would go through beatings, okay, because I wasn't in bed. And so back then, you were allowed to spank your kids, and CPS wasn't, you know, up your ass, and um, she would put me back to bed. So this went on for a few years and finally I outgrew the experience. I don't know if I just changed my focus or I was no longer in alignment. Now I know that it was because of the planetary alignment. So going through life, I you know had to endure some of the most horrific challenges and experiences that many children my age should not have had to go through. So um, I lost my dad at the age of 30, and that is what really threw me for a loop. I was hospice for my daddy, and I administered the medicines that he needed because hospice couldn't show up at the time. They were really busy. And so I administered the medications. I whispered in his ear, and I uh, did the unthinkable and helped him cross. I called his time of death, bathed him when he died, and helped roll him out. So after that, it got really hard for me to even sleep in my own bed. I couldn't get through life without doing, you know, drugs and alcohol. And I was a bartender at the time and just going through some of the most horrific experiences to try and numb myself. Well, it had gotten so bad that I started seeing things that people shouldn't see my daughter start, started telling me that there was an entity that was in our um, laundry room, and I didn't believe her. 
I didn't want to believe her, you know, and I, because mine was always chalked up to PTSD and bipolar depression and this, that, and the other, which I was just very spiritually aware, as was she. When you are a very spiritual individual, regardless of whether you know it or not, your kids are also going to take on those experiences and show you things that you have been taught that is taboo. And we don't, we don't talk about those things. Those are mental health crises. And so that's what they, they kind of put us under these, um, put us in these, uh, how do you want to say, um, brackets like you're if you see this or do this then you're bipolar if you do this then you, and you do this then you're schizophrenic and if you you know and so we're always being categorized when really we're all just spiritually aware now don't get me wrong you know some people do have mental health you know crises and stuff but i think for a lot of people too that we are very sensitive to the energy and after learning ast astrology um i realized that a lot of my bipolar was because my moon is in cancer so as i went through life and i was seeing things that i shouldn't have and you know trying to numb it all out with drugs and alcohol and you know whatever else i could get my hands on um i got so bad that my house ended up taking over me i ended up in a horrible relationship and i started seeing things that i should never have been able to see um, I had scratches down my back, which were extremely demonic. Um, they, it's scratches of three, which is, if you look it up, it's called the disrespect to the Trinity. So regardless of the amount of drugs and alcohol I was on, I was always still trying to be a good person. I was still trying to be a good mom. I was just trying to numb the fact that I was being abused at work, being abused at home, just like my whole life had consisted of is nothing but abuse. And so I tried to overcome the pain and continue being the warrior until I just couldn't. I was the person that everybody came to for advice. I was the person that everybody came to when they needed something. I was the person that, you know, if the kids, my kids' friends needed to run away, my house was the safe house. But it got to the point where, where was my safe house? From the time I was born till the time I was in my 30s, I had never had a safe upbringing. I had never had a safe place that I could go to and turn to and have somebody there for me. So I broke. I broke. And when I broke, I started seeing things that humans should never, you know, at least I was never taught these things, that these experiences were, were real and I had nobody to turn to. And so I had gotten to a place of being suicidal and I wanted to die and I had willed myself to death. I, I begged every night when I went to sleep, please just take me. I don't want to be here anymore. And I finally got to a point where I had called everyone. I even had this demonic force, um, end up giving me a number to a shaman or an email to a shaman and I reached out to the shaman and somehow she was able to receive my email. And I had explained to her everything that I was seeing and everything that I was experiencing. And she freaked out and was like, I don't know how you got a hold of me. I'm in a place right now where I don't even have internet. So the fact that your email even showed up scares the hell out of me. And unfortunately, I can't help you. So I went to a counselor because I was told that if I didn't, I was going to lose my children. And I got to the counselor and she says, um, you know, I'm vulnerable. I'm crying. I'm begging for help each and every day. I'm begging for help. And this counselor says to me, um, yeah, so, uh, okay. So I want you to do a little bit of homework. I want you to write down all the things you like about yourself. And it was so generic and it was so not real. And I was devastated. It was so like scripted and I needed something that was outside the box. So one day I was logged into social media and psychics show, started showing up in my newsfeed. I've never looked up psychics. 
and I logged into my email and I had astrology in my email. And I'm like, what is this? I have never, ever looked these things up because this was not part of my upbringing. I was baptized Presbyterian. I was uh, the way of the church, you know, and so I kind of went down the rabbit hole. I started clicking on it and it was taking me to YouTube channels. And next thing I know, I'm like, oh my God, this is my story. Oh my God, what do you mean I have a moon and a rising and a sun sign? Oh my God, I didn't know that there was 12 houses to the Zodiac and all of those made me up or made that up to be who I was and my experiences, depending on my where my Saturn was or where my 12th house was. I had no clue what the fuck all this meant. So I continued to go down the rabbit hole and it gave me a purpose. And I was at the brink of death at the time that I went through this experience and I had called and had an exorcism done. And I, I will never forget that day. I had to think outside the box and do something completely different that, you know, nobody told me, go and get an exorcism. That sounds like what that's what you need. In fact, if anything, everybody turned their back on me. When I needed people the most, my own family, my own friends, everybody turned their back on me because I wasn't somebody that could help them anymore. I needed help. And when I needed help, nobody was there. So when I found astrology after undergoing an exorcism, which gave me a second chance on life, it gave me hope. These people went out of their way. They're a television show, and I didn't know that at the time. I was just dying. I was down to 109 pounds soaking wet. And I reached out to them, and I sent them an email and told them my what I was going through. And they were like, I'm, I'm sorry, Peace. Like, we're a television show. Um, we can come next month. And I was like, I won't make it until this weekend. And instead of taking a moment to, um, you know, get their television show up and running, They dropped everything they were doing and they were there within a couple of days. And I'll never forget that. And out of all the people that should have been there that I expected to be there for me, it was perfect strangers. So they showed up. I underwent the exorcism. They were able to get the EVPs of the entity that was attacking me. And they cleansed me and they gave me hope. So after that, that's when I experienced in my news feed, the psychics and the astrologers. And next thing you know, I start studying all this. And it was like, next thing you know, I'm downloading all this information like a computer. Uploading, you know, like, and it's like, and then I'm speaking in tongues to everybody because everybody's like, what the fuck is she talking about? That's what an awakening is. It's not this foo-foo, you go out and you become a vegan and you go and meditate in in nature somewhere. You see the ugliest sides of yourself, the sides of you that other people don't want to see. They want to have this illusion of who they want you to be. And so when you're not that person anymore, they walk away from you. I was willing to commit suicide because all I wanted was a hug. All I needed was a hug. And so when I started studying astrology and psychics and tarot and spirituality, there was no butterflies and rainbows. I was scared shitless. And I had two choices. Live or succumb to the evil because that's what they wanted and or die. And so it took a lot of years after I started studying this work and doing this, this spiritual path that even then some of my family, they haven't been back. You know, they still look at me as crazy. My kids, you know, they don't want, I mean, they see what I'm doing. And the amount of people that I'm helping, but even then, you know, they don't really want to be a part of it. They want to be a part of it when it's the good times, but not when it's the bad times and not when it's the ugly stuff. Well, we have ugly stuff all around us. We all have a story. 
and we reach out to the people that we feel are supposed to be there for us when really in all actuality, if, if the life hasn't taught you lately that the people that you can count on are perfect strangers, not your, not your family, your family is going to be the first people that are going to hate on you. Your family and friends are going to be the last clients that you have. They want an old version of you. And I know how much my kids want this old version of me back, but yet they hated the old version of me. And the new version of me is so beautiful and so pure and has seen so many dark things and had went through the most excruciating experiences. But they want the old person back. They want to continue to accuse me of the old person who hasn't been here in almost a decade. So when you go through your spiritual experience, not everybody's going to like it. And people are going to fall off. Family and old friends, you're not going to fit in anymore. You're going to hit a whole nother level. You're going to get to a level of unfuckwithable and it's going to hurt and it's going to be lonely. And it's going to be scary because going through the awakening, nothing comes fast anymore. You have to, it's minute by minute. There's a lot of seconds in a minute that I have to be present for so that I can see, see the signs, the signs and synchronicities, the numbers. And right when you're going through it, you do go crazy. You don't just wake up one day and here it is. You train yourself and you start going crazy because you start realizing, oh my God, everything that I have ever been taught in my entire life doesn't exist. It was never real. And so now you have to get to a place where you're relearning what life is really all about. And these planets are shifting and turning and changing constantly. When the sun changes houses, that changes our focus. When the moon changes houses every two and a half days, it changes our emotions and where we, where we put our attention. And it doesn't always feel good. That's what bipolar is. For those of you water signs out there, it won't feel good. I'm a moon in cancer. I'm ruled by the moon. It's one thing when you have your sun in cancer, but try having your moon in cancer at zero degrees. And had I not learned that, I would be succumbing to the pain and the torture of all the shit that's going on around you, around all of us. But there's so much more to this life than what society is telling us. There's more to this life than what our parents have taught us. And not because they're trying to lie to us, but because they didn't know any better. But we're at a place right now, and we have evolved so much. We're not in Kansas anymore, Dorothy. We're not in the third dimension. If you're still trying to sit in the third dimension of materialism and chaos and drama and blaming everybody else for your unfortunate circumstances, you're not going to get it. And I will say, if you're sitting here watching this video and you've gotten this far, it's because you have a, an understanding and you too have been something through something so excruciating, so painful, that fundamentally changed your lives to where you're clicking on this video right now. Don't give up. Don't succumb to suicide. Because had I, I wouldn't be here. I wouldn't be here helping the um, tremendous amount of people that I'm helping. And as of next year with the planetary alignments, if you're depressed, they're going to do everything they can to talk you into suicide, assisted suicide. You mark my words, it's already happening. You're seeing it. But had it, I committed suicide, I wouldn't be able to have helped you. I wouldn't be making this video right now. And I'll tell you right now, I was 14 years old the first time I ever tried to commit suicide. My sister abandoned me. She was all I had. And now she left me with this abusive mother 
And I'll tell you what, it was it was a, hor a horrifying experience. And I ended up in a mental institution. But to me, it was the only out. You left me again. I'd been left again. And my whole life, I've had people walk away from me and abandon me. Because I say something that they don't like doesn't mean that I'm not telling you the truth. It just may, may be hard to hear. Still to this day, I deal with abandonment. It's just now, I don't care. If you want to leave me, if you want to walk away from me because you don't like what I have to say, it's not about me. That's about you. You're the one that's afraid. You're the one that doesn't want to see. You don't want to hear because it's ugly. If you get tempted with suicide, reach out, talk to someone. Just know that this too shall pass. I've been there so many times in my life. And with South Node and Scorpio that we have right now, this is where people are checking out because they've had enough. But if you can overcome this obstacle, I promise you, I promise you, you're going to become something that you never thought possible. I want to thank you guys for being here. I want to thank you for all of your support. I want to thank you for your time. And I want to thank you for listening. And I want to thank you more importantly for still being on this earth and not letting anything dole that or take that away from you. There are entities out there that are working against us at this very moment that are trying to bring us down as much as they possibly can. But if you can continue just trucking through the mud, even though it does feel like uh, quicksand, I'll tell you right now, when we make it out on the other end, you're going to feel so happy that you did not succumb to what they're trying to put us through. Don't fall into the bullshit, you guys, in the games. It's just part of the matrix. Come outside the matrix. There are so many signs and symbols and synchronicities your ancestors are here for you right now. They're guiding you and they guided you to this video. They guided you to this channel. They guided you to this place. And not just to me, to every other healer, to going out in nature. Because I will tell you right now, suicide is just, and I hate to say it, it's like hitting the easy button. You're like, you know what? This lesson is far too hard right now. So I'm going to go ahead and check out and I'll come back later. But here's the deal. When you come back later, you're going to have to come back to this spot and you're going to have to make a different decision next time. And I really hope that you never have to do this again. So even though it may be tough right now and you're going through whatever hardships that you're going through, everything is okay in the end. And if it's not okay, it's not the end. So take a chance with me and let's explore your inner galaxy. I love you guys all so much. And I hope that we get to chat again soon. I love you all. Take care.